These differences in cranial anatomy between these specimens, particularly the differences in musculature and the associated muscular features, reflects differences in diet of these specimens as well. Gorillas eat a very coarse, low-quality diet, basically chewing leaves and small plants every day. Humans obviously eat a much more diverse and high-quality diet. To further look at these anatomical differences, we can consider the dentition of these specimens as well, as they reflect dietary differences. For example, if we go back to a chimpanzee jaw, here are two chimpanzee jaws, and compare that to the human chewing apparatus, the human jaw, we can see further differences both in the size, shape, and structure in these organisms. In gorillas, that large projecting rostrum, that projecting snout, gives them a very U-shaped dental pattern, where the molar teeth and the premolars are found here along the sides of the jaw or the cheeks of the jaw, what we refer to as the buccal region of the jaw, and the incisors and canines are situated anteriorly. The canines in these specimens are large and projecting across all of the great apes, helping to establish this demarcation between the buccal teeth, the premolars and molars, and the anterior incisors. If we contrast that with a human jaw, we can see a very different shape and overall structure of the jaw. While we have the same teeth in the same pattern, two incisors, a canine, two premolars, and three molars in each quadrant of the jaw, the shape of the jaw is much more uh, parabolic or arch-like as opposed to the U-shaped structure we see in the chimpanzees and the other great apes. This is of course because humans don't have that projecting lower face, so there's no need to have a jaw that projects out or the teeth that project out with that. Whereas the great apes have a very large projecting canine, the human canine is small and in many ways looks just like the incisors uh, and doesn't differentiate itself from the rest of the teeth. We have the same three molars, two premolars, canine, and incisors, but their shape and size are different, associated with the different functions that they possess. Again, gorillas and other apes uh, have a very fibrous, plant-oriented diet. They're quite omnivorous, and chimpanzees in particular are quite omnivorous, eating lots of fruits and other meats as well, but the human diet is much more generalized and much broader than the other diets. The other difference, of course, which affects the human dentition is the fact that we've been applying technology to the food we eat for upwards of perhaps two or two and a half million years, meaning we partially externally process the foods that we eat. We don't rely solely on our physical anatomy to process the food. In other words, we don't rely solely on our jaws and teeth and the muscles that operate those jaws and teeth. We also rely on our ability to process food using stone tools, using technology, using cooking, and other kinds of techniques that allow us to externally process food. That's part of the reason why the teeth that we see in humans are more reduced and seem less functional in some ways than those of the apes. One other subtle difference in the dentition between humans and great apes is in the thickness of the enamel on the molars. Now the structure of the teeth between humans and great apes is basically the same, where the teeth are topped with a crown of enamel, or a crust of enamel basically around the outside of the, the tooth. The thickness, however, of this enamel varies. In humans, we have relatively thick enamel on our molars. The great apes, at least chimpanzees and gorillas, the African great apes, have relatively thin enamel on their molars. It turns out that this is an important point when we begin interpreting the fossil record for the earliest origin of hominins, uh, but it's something that's hard to observe on these specimens right here.